Okay, now let's talk about testing. Um, so for the MP, for the machine project, we give you the same tests that we use when we test your app for points, for real. Um, and th there's a real intentionality to this. There's a couple of reasons that we're doing this. The first one is I want you to see a little bit about what a real test suite looks like. Um, but the second is I want you to be able to work with those test suites and to understand what our expectations are. Um, this is different than what we do for the homework where we sort of generate tests and we, you know, we, we, we do that in this fairly sophisticated way. In this case, we've written these tests by hand. They may not be as, you know, perfect or as close to perfect as exhaustive as the tests are for these smaller problems that we have you do. Um, they were written by a human. They were written by me. Uh, now, what I will promise you is that you can get them to pass because I have a reference solution that passes all the tests including for this MP checkpoint and for the later MP checkpoints. So there, there is a solution, um, but it may be that in certain cases you find places where you can get code to pass that you don't think is entirely correct and that, that's okay, right? You know, um, there, there is a way to solve it. We're gonna guide you in that direction, right? Um, so let's find our test suites first. So I'm gonna go into, instead of source main, which is, so, so there's two projects in here. There's source main, that's where the code that's used to power our app lives. And then there's source test, and that's where the code used to test our app lives. I'm going to open up mp0 test.java. This is the test suite for mp0, the checkpoint that we're working on right now. On future MPs, what we will do is at the appropriate time, we will provide you with a new test suite. You will add that test suite to this directory, and then you will begin working on the next checkpoint. Um, okay, so, so this is mp0 test. Now, like the rest of the code that we provided, we try to make sure that this uh, code is extremely well documented um, so that you can understand what's happening. Now, there are two general ways that we're gonna test your app. Your app has two components. It essentially has this front end component where we're interacting with the user and drawing on the map and you know um, that type of thing. It also has what's called a backend component. That's a server that's providing the information about the favorite places to the front end. Normally, for a, a more normal, what's called full stack application, the, you know, the, the client runs on your phone and then the server runs in the cloud somewhere on some server machine on another computer that you don't own. In this particular case, we've sort of combined everything together to allow you to do full stack development in this testable way. What that means though, is that the test suites typically have, are divided into two parts. There's tests that only test the backend. So they interact with the server directly and make sure that it's functioning properly. And then there are tests that interact with the front end. They actually test the entire app and they all, you could almost think of them as like launching the app and then clicking on buttons and making sure that the right thing happens at the right point. Um, those tests tend to be a little slower. The tests that tend the back end, the, the tests that only test the back end components tend to be faster. Uh, and that just has to do with the nature of testing an entire app rather than just one component of that app. Okay, so let's look a little bit at these tests. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run the entire test suite and you can do this whenever you want. Right, so I'm gonna run test MP0 and we're gonna see what happens. This is what you should do when you are working on a checkpoint, is run the tests. We are prepared that we will definitely get questions on the forum being like, I ran the grader and this happened, I don't understand it. We typically don't answer those questions because the grader is not designed to give you the type of feedback that you will get from the test suites. The grader is only for estimating the number of points that you have earned. Don't use it during development. Use the test suites. They provide a lot more useful output. Okay. The test is, now, now the test suites that we've given you for MP0 contain a mixture of tests that should already pass. So you'll notice there were five tests that were run here. Three of them are passing already. These were tests that I wrote when I was developing the MP to make sure that certain parts of it were working correctly. Now there are two tests that are failing. Those tests are there for you to fix for MP0. They are not hard to fix. Um, and once you do, you will earn full credit. Now, typically what we're gonna do, so let's, let's go through this together. Now, what you'll see over here is these green arrows. These allow you to run one test at a time. And I would strongly suggest that you run one test at a time. Pick a test that's not working, 
try to understand why it's not working, and run that test until it passes. Then run the whole test suite, because sometimes when you fix one thing, you break something else. So you wanna make sure other things aren't broken that you thought should already work. If everything is still working, you've made forward progress. So the workflow is identify a failing test, run that test, understand what the test expects and what's going wrong, fix the bug, or add the functionality that the test needs to pass, make sure that test is passing, then rerun the whole test suite. Then go on to the next failing test. When you're out of failing tests, you're done with the checkpoint. All right, so let's do that. So I'm gonna go here, uh, there's one test called Test Activity Center. This is probably the more difficult of the two tests that you need to complete. Now you'll notice that these uh, there's point values here. So MP0 is worth 100 points total. There's 10 points for check style and then 90 points for these two tests. In later checkpoints, usually the sum total of everything is only 90 because there's an early deadline that you get 10 points for, which is to encourage you to start on time and make some progress so you don't leave everything for the last minute. But for MP0, it's a short checkpoint. There's only one deadline and 100 points, 40 points for fixing the title of the activity, 50 points for fixing the center of the map. So this green button over here allows me to run just that test all by itself. So let's do that it's still going to fail. Now let's look at this test and try to figure out what it expects to happen. So it says start the main activity. Once it starts, check that the map is centered correctly. And what it's, what it's doing, this, so this is testing code. This may be a little bit different than things that you've seen before. Um, it's asserting that the center of the map when the activity starts up is approximately equal to this value called default center. And if I look to figure out where that is, that value is up here. So the mapping library that we're using called OSM Droid has this uh, idea of what's called a geo point. A geo point is a lat long position. Okay, and we're expecting that you center the map at this particular spot. Now you may be wondering, where is this, right? What is so special about this particular location? And I will just leave that for you to enjoy once you fix this problem and once your map is centered properly. But what's happening right now is that it's expecting the map to be centered at a particular point and it's not. Now, let me show you something that you may be tempted to do, which is you may think, hey, I know how to fix this problem. I'll just take out this line, right? I will just change the test suite. So watch, if I do this, then the test will pass. Actually, it still doesn't pass. Uh, let's see. Um, hold on a sec. Oh, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm modifying the wrong thing. Oh, I was like, wow, I thought that would work. Okay, here it is, test map center, okay. So I'm gonna comment this out. Um, I'll run the test again. I was like, wow, I outsmarted myself, didn't I? And now it's gonna pass. And I'm thinking, oh boy, changing the test suites is not going to work. Let me explain why. So first of all, the test suites represent ground truth here. The test suites are what we expect to happen. You don't get to decide where the map is centered. We've decided that. You have to adhere to the test suites we provide. When you submit your code for official grading, we don't use your test suites. We take our test suites that we provided to you and we copy them over into your project to make sure that you're testing using the testing code that we expect. So you're not gonna be able to get away with this, basically is what I'm saying. So what we have to do is we have to figure out how to get the map to center correctly. Now, let's go over. I'm going to give you kind of a big hint here because it's a little tricky, right? So I'm going to go over to the main activity. Now, one thing you could do is you could essentially say, okay, start Googling OSM Droid, how to center map, and you would probably come up with the right information. And if you want to do it that way, feel free to stop the video right here and, and go off that direction, and you'll probably find some, some helpful advice. Um, but let's, let's look right here, right? So this says set the current map zoom to the default, right? And it also uh, grabs this thing called a map control. Now, one of the great things about uh, uh, Android Studio is that it has autocomplete. And so what I can do is I can start typing map controller and I can hit dot and this will give me a bunch of uh, potential uh, potentially useful methods like 
set zoom. I can zoom to a particular level. I can, uh, an I don't know what animate to, I can scroll by set center. Ooh, well, interesting, that might be useful. Uh, zoom in, there's all the different things I can do to control the map, right? Um, and so, you know, this might be a good starting point for me to figure out how to adjust the, the center position of the map. Once I'm able to do that, this test will start to pass. And I would encourage you at that point to run the emulator so you have a sense of what that magic location is, like where it is. I might have left a comment and it says where it is actually, but I don't think so. I think I took that out. Um, so this is how to approach the test suites, right? Now, one of the th cool things here is that when you run one of these tests, right? So I did test map center, let's run it again. I took out my comment, it's gonna fail. Um, if I wanna run it again, I could just hit, uh, in, I'm on a Mac, I could hit command R. Uh, oh wait, sorry. Okay, maybe, maybe it's a, I think it's a different keyboard shortcut. I'm used to using IntelliJ. Um, but anyway, there, there is a keyboard shortcut that allows me to just run this again, or I can just hit this play button. So when you're working on your code, you essentially have this test all queued up. Then you go back to mainactivity.java, you start messing around with set center or other methods on this map controller that might seem useful. You gotta figure out what to pass it, how do you create one of those things. There's a few challenges that are kind of left here, but I think you'll be able to do it. Um, and then as you're doing it, you're continuing to run this, you're continuing to run this test, you run this test, and at some point it's gonna go green and you're gonna be like, boom, you got it, right? And that's how you make progress on the MP. It's also a great way of making progress on any software development project you work on in the future. What we're doing here is essentially uh, teaching you a style of development that's called test-driven development, where you have tests and you write the code so that it adheres to the tests. Now in a normal project, you don't get given tests. Sometimes you do, sometimes there's someone else at your organization that writes the tests and then you write the code, but frequently you write the tests. So a lot of the projects I work on, when we find a bug, the first thing we do is we write a test to expose it, and then we fix the code so that the test passes. So essentially, you write the test first to expose something that's wrong with your project, then you write the code until the test passes, then you try all the other tests, make sure they're still passing, and then you, know, you pour yourself a cup of coffee and take a break, pat yourself on the back, and you, know, you did a good piece of work that day. Okay, so this is how to use the test suites to make incremental forward progress. In summary, find a test that's not working, run that test, Make changes to your code until that test starts to work again. Once that test starts to work again, I would run the entire test suite to make sure that I haven't broken anything else. You know, make sure the tests that were passing before are still passing. If that's the case, check the mark and I've made forward progress on the MP and I can move on to whatever the next thing is I need to do.